Paul Desmond is the master of melodic and sequential playing. He sometimes is referred to as the most classical sounding jazz saxophonist there is. Why is this? The easy answer would be his inimitable sound, which sounds like a warm breeze on a chilly evening. But there are also plenty of classical compositional techniques that are very apparent in his solos. But first, Paul Desmond gave also quite explicit hints towards his classical music taste with quoting melodies from famous classical composers. Take a look at this example of him quoting Tchaikovsky. also based a blues composition for his own album on Sacre du Printemps. Sacre blues, you just gotta love Paul Desmond's sense of humor. Another example would be quoting the third movement of Debussy's String Quartet. Stravinsky's Petrushka. And finally, we now come to the man with whom Paul Desmond seems to have the most in common, Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> Besides this example, there are a lot of other similarities between these two. I found the use of fugue, compound melodies, secondary fives, white triads, and landing on thirds to outline the chord. So let's first dissect a fugue. What is a fugue? A fugue is a compositional technique in two or more voices built on a subject or theme that is introduced at the beginning in imitation, repetition at different pitches, and which recurs frequently in the course of the composition. Only the first part of that definition is not directly applicable for a solo instrument like saxophone. All the other aspects are definitely in Paul Desmond's improvisations. Let's take a look at bar 31 in the Brandenburg solo, where he has a Bach-like subject. This sequence is descending for a full bar, which he then answers with a single repetition of the subject. He then repeats the initial descending subject an octave lower, which he answers then concluding the line with a range jump and the initial subject. <laughs> These kind of range drums are also called compound melodies, which Bach often used for his compositions for solo instruments that couldn't play chords, but to simulate those chords. Also Desmond used this frequently, and here is an example of that same technique and on the same tune, Brandenburg, but on a different concert. <laughs> Here he used the skips in range to do a question and answer with himself as well as establishing a very clear rhythmical subject. And this he plays in a very classical way, very straight, which adds up to the classical vibe of his improvisation. The first six notes are the subject descending, which he variates with the subject starting lower and then ascending. He then repeats this process of question and answer over the range of the horn, outlining the chords perfectly. So here we could speak of two separate melodies interacting with each other, which totally fits the fugue description. 
The next example is the same ID playing even more with echoing himself through the different ranges of the horn and displacing the rhythms. <laughs> So far we have seen a rather diatonic use of his sequential developments, but Paul could also adapt the sequence beautifully outside. In the Brandenburg studio version we see also a second subject, used over a rather quickly changing chord progression. Here we see a second subject, outlining the use of a new aspect, the use of secondary fives. This is one of the clearest ways to modulate anywhere used by many jazz composers, but earlier a common composition tool for Johann Sebastian Bach. In this case it's even a longer chain of secondary fives. A is the relative dominant or fifth degree of D, which in turn is the dominant of G, which is the dominant of C. Whereas Paul Desmond played this particular sequence on a chord change made by Bach, he used that same ID to impose these kind of chord changes over these foolish things. <laughs> Using a clear rhythmic and melodic ostinato with those triads, he suggests many secondary dominants in a true Bach-like fashion. If we stay with the use of triads, here is another way how our two main characters connect the use of white triads. A white triad is where you skip a chord tone in that triad which makes the third come on top. So on C for example this would be C skipping E, so then G, then skipping again the C and then E, C, G, E. The most famous Bach example for this is his first cello suite. <laughs> Here is Desmond's interesting application of this ID to simulate a different chord progression over the original. This brings me to a last observation on the Brandenburg transcription. You can see two main concepts throughout the whole transcription, one melodic and one rhythmic. Melodically he lands most of the time on the thirds of the chord, certainly when it's major. Grubeck always leaves a lot of room for Paul Desmond when he's soloing, so he uses that to really outline every chord. And this is easiest done by playing those thirds. Secondly, his steady use of entering on the one end to create a clear rhythmic ostinato. So how did Paul Desmond get into all these classical compositional techniques you might ask? Well his father was an organist and an arranger and he was involved in composing music for the very first stop motion pictures, so movies in the beginning of the 20th century. And he was a publisher of a sheet music company, so a young Paul Desmond literally had access to thousands of tunes and sheets, as well as his father giving him arranging and composition lessons. You can find more about that in Paul Desmond's touching biography written by Doc Ramsey. It's truly a great book. I could literally talk for days about why Paul Desmond is an underestimated genius, but I'll leave that for now. Thank you kindly for the view and if you want to follow me or the channel closer about what we do in the normal day life and with the YouTube channel, you can follow us on Instagram. Subscribe if you like more analysis, transcriptions and tutorials or if you like the material presented in this video and all the PDFs and stuff we make, you can also go to our Patreon page, that would be really helpful. I'll see you next time.